Mark, I'll just ask you how you're uh, enjoying the six nations so far. Everything seems to be going well from the outside. So uh, how have you enjoyed the couple of games so far? Um, yeah, the Six Nations has been great. Um, I feel like I can kind of enjoy it a little bit more. Last Six Nations was also great fun, but I just spent the whole time stressing, like trying to learn all the plays, all the calls. Um, coming in the second time is a lot easier when I had a kind of year under my belt. Um, yeah, that's what it's all about now for me, just kind of enjoying these moments. And I know that I'm in a special team here, so it's, it's something you don't get all the time. And yeah, it's been great. Do you still feel you have to? Pinch yourself sometimes if you thought back three years ago that you'd be <laughs> going for a grand slam with Ireland. Uh, it's minutes. crazy seeing some of like my Snapchat memories of what I was doing three years ago is completely different to this. I mean, leave it to your imagination, but um, yeah, no, definitely it's. Um, I'm very grateful, and I'm I kind of um, seeing like stuff like that from as I said three years ago is a bit of a pinch yourself moment. I understand how lucky I am, and I guess that's why now I'm saying like I just want to enjoy this as much as I can. It's not going to last forever, but. Um, for the time being, loving it. What's the mood of the camp like for this Italy week, you know, coming off that big win, France a bit of a break and getting back in together? Is it something you have to kind of guard against getting too high, a bit of complacency mood? No, not at all. Uh, not at all. Like, if you've watched the games that they've been playing as well, it's not the Italy of old. Like, it's a new Italy team where they're playing, um, they're playing, like, really good, exciting footy. Their attack's been unreal and... Um, they've got some genuine superstars in their team now, which they probably haven't had before. Um, they've been a lot more consistent, so uh, maybe in past years you could get a bit complacent, but um, you know every team's kind of firing in all, on all cylinders at the moment, so it makes our job a lot easier to, to focus in on them. Sorry, thanks. Mike, is that something as a team you've talked about to not be complacent because, as you said, it's not the year old? Yeah, we look. It's it's with every week, you know. No, no matter what team we're playing, um, we're always trying to make each other better, and we're never um, never happy with. It sounds a bit weird, but like you're never happy, like completely happy with your game. I guess there's always things to improve on, and I think as soon as you start just focusing on everything that's going great, um, you kind of let th uh, things slip. So um, yeah, as I said, like coaching staff and player driven as well. We're always focusing on on things that we can improve on. Um, it's the only way that we're going to get better and, and stay where we are. A really impressive win against France, but do you feel that there's more to come from this Irish team? Definitely, you know, we, we had a great start against Wales and kind of took our foot off it a little bit. Um, France was, was better again, so uh, we're just looking to build on that this week. Um, it, you know, being up against Italy, it doesn't make anything change. Um, as, like attacking wise, we think they're going to be just as big as a threat as France. So um, it's going to be exciting playing in Rome as well. It's going to be yeah, that's going to be good fun. Just when you're asked there about pinching yourself that you're here in this moment, you would have played with Australia back in the 2018 World Cup under 20, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So to go from that to <laughs> potentially be preparing for a World Cup with Ireland, what is that like? Um, Yes, yeah, so it's something I didn't really know would be happening, could happen. Like, um, it's quite weird to think of, to be honest. But uh, no, I couldn't be happier with it, with my decision to come over here as well. Um, it's been it's been the best decision of my life for sure, coming over here, and uh, I've made such great friends and met family I never knew and stuff like that. It's just been a whirlwind. So um, strange, but yeah, no, it's been great. Mark, what do you say your, your biggest improvement is uh, as an international player? Um, I've, uh, yeah, a bit of a cliche, but like I've made it like a real emphasis on just doing the small things right. I think uh, like catch pass, um, kicking game, like just little things like that can just be really important come um, international games where, you know, if you kick a ball out on the full, it could really change the game in the snap, like a drop of a hat. So, um, it's been working on that, and I find that kind of the other stuff will come once once uh, I got my hands on the ball a couple of times and um, run off people's shoulders that I can start to kind of express myself a bit more. Did Andy give you anything specific that he would like to see from you? Say again, sorry? Did Andy give you anything specific, like when he took when he chats to you, is he, is he trying to encourage you to do this or do that? No, he just encourages you to be yourself, um, whatever that is, you know. For some, it's different, so... Um, Yes, for me, as I said, it's just get my hands on the ball and when I have it, just back myself, not second-guessing of 
um, any plays or anything like that. Just the first thing that comes to my head, do it. There's no, he always says there's no wrong answers. Sometimes it feels like there is, but um, no, nah, he's, uh, he's great in that way that you can just play your game. Can you just tell us, um, I know Brian and a couple of others were in showing a video a couple of weeks ago. I'm just wondering what you made of it, because obviously you have Irish heritage, but you wouldn't be expected to know the, the history. What did you take away from that session or that documentary or that talk? What, what stood out for you? It was just, it was so strong and powerful as well. Like we, not only did they get to speak, but listening to some guys in our team um, kind of speak on it as well, gave their points of views, which wasn't planned. Like they kind of came out and expressed some things like um, Keith and Keith Earls and James Ryan spoke really well about kind of what the jersey meant to them, what the song Shoulder to Shoulder meant to them, stuff like that, which kind of makes it really hit home. Um, made me really realize like how much of a bother this country really was in at one point. Um, and it's just pretty amazing to think of one team out of the whole, like out of every sport stayed together, which was rugby. And we're able to keep going and um, stick together. Yeah, it just made it like a great, it just, it just made, it, made me realize how special this jersey really is, I guess. And, how much it actually means to everybody here and how special, like it's, you can't say that there's any other team in the world that's really gone through what we have and stayed together. So, no, it was, it was really powerful. Brian, what sort of leader is James Ryan and how does he differ to Johnny Saxton? Um, they're both pretty similar. I think James probably would have learned a lot off Johnny um, for his time in camps and, and playing with him at Leinster. Um, they expect the best and they, they really drive good standards. So um, there's nothing too, too different out there really. Um, yeah, they're both great leaders and they both, as I said, they both know what they want and expect everybody to be doing their absolute best out there. Matt, just going back to that France game, there was a moment there where it looked like you were certain for a try and Dupont managed to pull you back and drag you off. Were you, were you surprised at his strength there? Yeah, I, I've... Um, Believe it or not, that gets brought up a lot, uh, the DuPont try. So pretty rehearsed in what I say here. But um, no, I think it just kind of it showed his brute strength, first of all. But it also just shows how smart of a player he is. Like I've, I've seen plenty of people in the same situation where they just try to tackle the player out and that's kind of it. Like I've never seen anybody go directly for someone's hips to like lift them off the ground so they can't go forward. Like it was just... To be fair to him, it was pretty smart. Um, nothing I could really do about it. Maybe someone a bit bigger than me could have powered over, but uh, you know, I think it just shows like what kind of caliber player he really is. You learned something from that? No, I don't know what else I could have done. Like, I, I, if I was in that situation again, I'll have to maybe I'll just dive, like jump in the air or something like that. Something a bit different, but um, yeah, it was it was some play from him. Mac, after the break week, how do you go about kind of trying to get back some of that momentum, harness it, and bring it into the game the weekend? Um, you know, comp kind of just starts again, I guess. You know, it's everyone's so like everyone's buzzing and so pumped for the first game that it's kind of easy to get up for, and it's pretty much the same when you come back from a break. We know how important every game is. Um, a loss or not getting a bonus point could be what makes or breaks your whole competition. So. It's quite easy to get up for for these games. Like you know, you got to win every single one. As 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 I said there, so um, it's not too different from maybe like the start of the comp. I'd say. You said earlier that uh, there's more to come from this team. What specifics have you been working on trying to improve from those first two games? Um, just staying in it the whole the whole time. Not not letting teams off at all. Just really being cutthroat throughout the whole 80 minutes. Um, I think if we put together a whole 80 minute performance that not only are we going to beat teams but we're going to put a, a good few points on them as well so um, yeah it's just staying in every moment, staying in every play is really going to make us hard to live with. Um, is this the best Italy team you've seen and, and where do you think they've improved specifically? Yeah but I think anyone would be kidding themselves if they said they've seen a better one like they've they said they got great win in Wales, Oz um, being, you know, pretty uh, unlucky against France, 
showed up at England in Twickenham, which everyone knows isn't easy at all. Um, I think they've just, they're sure of what kind of game they want to play, where maybe in times they've kind of, yeah, been a bit frazzled when it comes to it, but they just look really sure of, of their identity at the moment and, yeah, how they want to play the game. And I think they have some genuine superstars in their team now that are kind of um, carrying that aren't just good, solid Italian players, but they're actually world, world-class players, so that always helps as well. Have you done much study on Caputo? You might come across him, so you might to come across him at some stage. Um, what, what stands out about him, or have you identified a way to uh, keep, him, keep him quiet? Um, yeah, he's just like, he's just quick, he's just an eyes-up player. Um, so I think if we can get our hands on him and rough him up a bit, that would kind of help us. You know, he's... He's not the world's biggest player, but he, as I said, he's so quick that um, probably going to have to hunt in threes to to take care of him. But it's you know uh, when it comes to it, it we're going to have to be focusing on every every player in that back line as well. They're all super quick whippets. So um, yeah, and no, I've done a little bit of footage on him. He'll um, he'll be dangerous, but now ready for him.